Hello and welcome to episode 27 of Theatre Chat Live. How are we all doing? Let me know if you've been seeing any shows recently. I've had a manic day and I want to talk to you about it because it's really exciting. Um, so first of all this morning you might have seen that we gave you a save the date for West End Live finally, which is happening on the 18th and the 19th of September, 2021. Um, and it feels so good. It feels so good to press send on that. Um, it's something that I've really been missing West End Live. You can see I've got a little programme up in the background. Um, obviously, Official in the Theatre, we're the same kind of media team behind um, West End Live. So for us, it's been so lovely to kind of put some good news out there and, you know, just kind of reassure everyone that things are coming back on stage. Um, so more information about West End Live will be out in the next few months but for now um, we've got the date which is the 18th and the 19th of September so hopefully we'll see you there. Um, today I was also with the cast of What the Ladybird Heard. We were doing some filming for Kids Week um, so I've been in central London today um, in a the theatre filming some bits and bobs of the cast, um, some little kind of tips for how to kind of enjoy kids week the most and make sure you spend a whole day of it rather than just going to theatre in the evening um so yeah so keep your eyes peeled for that and then tonight frankie is going to the phantom of the opera reopening night it's their first night that they're opening so you can catch up with frankie on our stories um later on this evening and see how that's all going so it's all happening it's um yeah, very exciting time. And I've just had um, a fizzy drink, so I feel like I'm on a bit of a sugar rush. Um, but yeah, it's great. Uh, how are you guys doing? We've got, I saw someone said, here we go, Scarlett said, went to see Alexandra Burke in Joseph on Thursday and she was fabulous. Blew me a kiss too because she recognised me having seen her so many times before. Amazing. I bet that was so good. I saw Joseph um, before um, the pandemic and the show is just so colourful and brilliant and feel good, isn't it? I'm sure you had a brilliant time. Um, Mr. Theatre Fan says, I'm so excited for this. Um, we've also got Living in Revolting Times. When will we get the cast announcement for Wicked? Not sure yet, but I'm sure when we do get the announcement, we'll be posting it on social. So keep your eyes and ears peeled. Um, Matt is seeing Magic Goes Wrong next week. Um, and yeah, and Mr. Theatre fan says Mischief Movie Night has been incredible. So obviously we are talking about Mischief because today we're going to be speaking to Dave Hearn from uh, Mischief Comedy who um, is going to talk to us a bit about Mischief Movie Night in. And we're also going to be speaking to Saffron Kuma about an online film called Viral. So without further ado, shall we get started? Let's call in. Katie says, we saw the play goes wrong the other week. It was so good. Um, and adding sketches says, still recovering from anything goes on Sunday. Seeing Lion King for the first time. Amazing. Hi, Dave. How are you doing? Hello. Am I in? I, do, I don't in. have Instagram, so I don't know how this works. You are in and <laughs> you look great. So, Oh, thank good. you so much. I, don't, I feel like a bit of a mess today. Oh, I, I've been running around central London, so thank God it's not smell of vision because I feel like you'd really sure. smell of pong. <laughs> <laughs> but you've How had a fizzy doing? drink and you're pretty jacked up yeah can you tell no no i think you're like you're on i think you're on my level which is good oh, you know okay, good yeah yeah which is that's nice. what we need um how are you doing how's it all going i'm very well thank you yeah this was sort of like uh slightly impromptu i got um, i got a message from our wonderful marketing team saying are you free and of course of course i'm free um i'm trying to i've got a, a plant in the background i'm trying to get that in so i look sophisticated oh it's yeah book. oh and that's what books. you're getting though Oh. my personal life that's all you got <laughs> very nice um i was actually going to start by asking you about your personal life because obviously um you've been off stage for a bit and i saw a video mm. on your twitter of you doing some parkour is it yes yeah yeah um, I jump tell about. me more um so a couple of years ago i started doing like free running and parkour and i have a, a, a trainer a guy called chima who's absolutely wonderful um i do like trampolining and gymnastics and tumbling and stuff like that um as a man who's had many injuries, it's a dangerous uh, pastime. Um, but it's one of those things that's really exciting because um, he sort of pushes me to my limit. 
and uh, I'm just kind of like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. And then you do it and it feels great. Yeah, it's definitely one of those things that you see people doing and you're like, oh, that'd be so cool if I could do that. Yeah, some people make it look very easy. Um, I think I'm slightly more laboured, potentially, but it's a, it's a good hobby. I enjoy it. Yeah, definitely. And also good as an actor to have lots of different skills that you can maybe use in the future. Yeah, I think like um, in actually in Mischief Movie Night the other day, uh, we actually ended the show with me doing a cartwheel, I think, um, a sort of moderately impressive. Um, but I was in that moment leading up to that cartwheel. I was in my head. I was going, can I do a back somersault? Can I do one from standing? And I was I decided against it because I wasn't certain. And I thought better not to on live TV just to attempt yeah. to somersault and fail. <laughs> <laughs> definitely um amazing yes so let's talk a little bit about mischief and mischief movie night obviously mm. you are um one of the original members of mischief um olivier award-winning mischief comedy oh, thank um you. could you tell me a little bit more about mischief for people who maybe have been living in a box for the last few years personally? sure um so uh we were a very small theater company i'll give you the short version uh, we were a very small theatre company and we mainly did improv, which is kind of what we're back to doing now. Uh, but we wrote a couple of shows that are based around a kind of goes wrong farce style genre. Um, and those shows started in the smallest possible way in a room above a pub playing to about 12 people. Um, and we were very lucky. Some producers came along and it was sort of where luck meets preparation. We worked really hard, but also we were fortunate enough to have the wonderful producers, Mark Benny, uh, Mark Bentley and Kenny Wax. Um, invest some money into us and we took the shows on tour got transferred to the west end got transferred to broadway and we were able to just kind of use that momentum to build more and more shows into the kind of silly empire you see before you today absolutely and a little bit about um mischief movie night so as you said you did kind of, you started off as an improv company mm. um how is it doing improv now after everything that you've kind of achieved with Mischief? Do you feel like it's any different to how you first started or not so much? Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. It's really, I think it's one of those strange shows that kind of feels a bit more, potentially a bit more for the actors really than the audience because it's a lot of fun to do. Um, but yeah, it's really the, the shows that goes wrong stuff and particularly our other kind of style of comedy is appears chaotic, but it's very, very regimented. Um, and we hone everything down and we tighten all the screws and we make sure you know everything is kind of uh, not just like loose as we're actually with improv it's the complete opposite so it's so much fun just to kind of let go and just like mess about and have a lot of fun and tell stories and I find it's the show that I laugh the most in because I'm, I'm constantly surprised by my friends or surprised by stuff that people come up with um, and so yeah it does feel different it feels much more relaxed now I think because it's not our main show anymore it's it's a show that actually is now standing on its own two feet in its own right but it was always in the shadow of um the goes wrong shows and now it just is it's yeah we're just much more relaxed about it and we're having a lot more fun with it i think than we did in the early years and that comes with age as well so it's it's really fun absolutely um tell me a little bit about how it all works so the idea is is that there we show you a film so it's called what's called long form improv for those the of you that don't know it uh, so short form is kind of like whose line is it anyway kind of small sketches like quick games um and you have to be very fast and very funny for that kind of style uh ours is the idea is that we tell a full narrative over an hour and uh we create a movie from scratch so the audience choose a, a genre a title and a location of a completely made up movie and then uh, yeah we uh, the music is improvised the script is improvised everything is just made up on the spot and um, there's a character who sits at the side called Oscar who can kind of pause and rewind stuff. Um, and we sort of have a bit of a kind of strange meta game with him where often we try and wind him up by complicating the story. Um, and it's it's a fun kind of back and forth. Absolutely. Um, are there any tips um, improv wise for people who might want to get into improvisation? If in doubt, shout. Um, that's always my one. Uh, and if you're not sure, just look like you are and you'll be fine. I think if, um, in terms of actual practical advice, <laughs> um, <laughs> improv, uh, I think there are lots of, literally, if you just Google improv classes, there are so many different classes available by amazing improv teachers. And you can go along and the improv community is um, often quite strange, but very supportive. And so I think um, it's one of those real leaps of faith. You just have to learn by doing 
because there is no rehearsal there is no practice like you can learn certain techniques and you can learn about narrative and you can learn the theory of the craft as much as you want but your my my advice is just get in fail learn fail better and i think you just kind of got to keep keep doing it and even now like i think we're at a point where the the shows feel really good and they feel fairly consistent but it's a strange thing with improv is that you're kind of constantly chasing that high of like almost like a perfect show but everyone has a different version of that so you just got to kind of get stuck in and do it and not what really not worry about being funny just try and tell a good story yeah that's very true actually because i feel like when you're doing improv you're like oh i've got to come up with something that's really funny like mm. i'm gonna enjoy it but actually i guess more the more spontaneous stuff is a bit more random and a bit more funny in a way yeah and usually like you're you kind of end up rejecting stuff that comes into your brain because you're worried that it's going to be boring. But the the boring offer tends to be the best one in terms of like creating a story. Um, and a guy who's our sort of improv consultant, a guy called Adam Megiddo, who uh, runs a company, uh, a company, a company called Showstopper. Um, he, he would always say like, rather than trying to make people laugh, you're going to do that anyway, because you're doing something impossible. So, try and tell a good story try and make people gasp or cry or like really invest in the characters and then you can undercut it by being funny and being silly because that is what comes naturally to us anyway so we have to kind of play against it yeah absolutely is there any memorable moments from movie nights that you've done recently oh wow yeah there's always they're so hard because you either people tend to have short-term memory or long-term memory so you remember the show in about five years or you remember it immediately after it happened. Um, I'm, I am constantly caught out. There was a wonderful scene the other day where um, an actor called Matt Cavendish came into the show and um, he hasn't done the show with us for years and years and years. Um, and he's quite, a, he's quite a loose cannon, quite a curveball, but he's got a, such a bright, bouncy energy. And I just found for the first time in a long time, I wasn't in control of any of the scenes I was doing with him. And it was such a joy. <laughs> um, there was a scene where he had to come up, I think, with five metaphors and he just could not do it. He kept coming up with similes and eventually got to the point where he just abandoned ship and walked off stage, left me on my own. And that, it was absolutely like an hysterical. <laughs> yeah. I, I would not be able to do that, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, and he couldn't do it either. And it was very, very, very funny. And um, yeah, it was such a joy having this. We had a sort of crazy crazy team in the last sort of five shows because we had a few COVID issues so we sort of slammed together a kind of crack team and um, actually it was a, a lot of people who'd never performed together before and it was such a joy to, it was such an electric atmosphere in the room um, so all of that was was really really fun. Absolutely um, so with um, Mischief Movie Night In um, am I right in saying that you can watch it online but there's also tickets available to watch in person? That's correct. Yeah. So um, on mischiefcomedy.co.uk is all, basically all the information about our all of our shows. Uh, there's a little tab for Mischief Movie Night in. And so what we're doing now is we have a live studio audience, which I think holds about like 60, 70 people, maybe, um, which is a really, really nice amount. Um, and obviously, we're now able to sell more of those seats. So you can book those tickets online. You can also book uh, just to have a link to watch the show live uh, but you can also book to be what's part of the um, particip a participation panel on Zoom uh, and so you can kind of vote on certain suggestions and be a bit more involved and talk directly to, to Oscar or Emmy whoever's playing that part uh, so yeah there's loads of ways to get involved but also you know if you just want to sit and watch us attempt the impossible then it's very easy as well. Absolutely and how has it been being back on stage after so long? You? Absolute joy um, I think we were really lucky during the first hundred lockdowns that um, we managed to do a bit of open air theatre, do um, the Minac and Regent's Park and in Brighton and stuff like that. Um, and then we were able to kind of sort of squeeze in a bit of TV of the second series of the Goes Wrong show and film that because it's much easier to coordinate COVID restrictions um, with no audiences. But we did a full run of Mischief Movie Night with no audience um, in front of uh, what I called playing to the abyss, uh, which was very strange because you're doing a comedy show and you, you have no idea if it's funny. Um, you have no idea if, if you can kind of push a, a joke further or stay in something for longer. And so now we have a studio audience in the room. People are just so pumped to be there and just so like jacked up and excited to see something. And so I feel yeah it's quite electrifying and it's very very nice uh just to kind of 
just have someone laugh at you again and just to have people just really happy to be there it's amazing yeah it must be so weird especially when you're doing something like improv where you mm. haven't got that feedback from the audience but obviously now you do I guess maybe you learn a bit more stuff when there was no one there and again you had to do a lot of that thinking of just keep going just believe in yourself keep doing it so yeah and that. it's rhythm as well like the hardest thing with with comedy is timing and I think like the um the problem is often that you don't know how long a laugh is going to be so you can almost plot the, the laughs in um in a tv show or in a scripted piece because you can kind of guess roughly and often we guess it wrong, but you can kind of guess roughly how funny something will be. But in an improv show, people find stuff that is just never intended to be funny. And you, you don't know how to play that and you don't want to like crash over people's enjoyment of it. So, yeah, it's quite a strange lesson to learn, but it's uh, it was a really valuable one. And we were so grateful to be able to keep doing the show and keep providing people with with laughs. But you're just hoping that people are in their homes enjoying themselves. Yeah, wetting themselves, crying laughing. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure they were. Um, Fantastic. Uh, so what can we see from Mischief maybe in the future as um, Theatreland kind of returns back to normal? Are you going to be doing more kind of movie nights in or maybe doing a few more different plays? Do you know if there's anything going on? Well, we're constantly, we're actually having a meeting this week, I think. I should find out. I should know that. <laughs> um, if anyone is watching who's organising that meeting, my apologies. Um, but yeah, we're going to have a, a creative meeting this week and kind of talk about the, the future, the kind of stuff that we want to do, the kind of stuff that we want to make. I think the main focus right now is just getting the shows that we had that were planned to go on back up and running. Um, trying to get as much stuff back in the West End. We're talking about what we can do with Magic Goes Wrong because that's on tour and so it's grown up so play and plays back in the West End as well. So the main focus, particularly from the producer's office, is just to get those shows stable, up and running, get people's faith back in theatre as well, get people back in and feeling comfortable to see stuff. And the theatres are doing an amazing job to assist that as well, making people feel really safe and comfortable. Um, and in terms of, yeah, in terms of what Mischief will be producing next, we're definitely having lots of ongoing conversations. There's lots of ideas, but we've had a lot of time to come up with new stuff. So I'm sure everyone will have lots to bring to the table. Whether we can do it or not is a, is a different matter. But we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for joining today. Um, if people want to get tickets for Mischief, um, as you said, they can just go onto Mischief's website um, and I will link it in our description when I post this out. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, thank you so much for joining and can't wait to see you back on stage again. Thank you very much. Take care. See you later. Bye. Bye. Lovely. Lots of comments from everyone as I was talking to Dave there. Um, a lot of people talking about solstice, which I imagine is a in-joke for anyone who's watched any mischief um, movie nights in. Um... Caitlin says, you are all amazing. I've never watched one where I haven't laughed. Um, Lifford Dennis says, I love the Mischief Movie Night Inn. Have seen a bunch of them. I can't believe they are nearly finished again. Yes, so they are finishing. I think the beginning of August um, is their last show. Um, but yeah, go on to the Mischief website. You can find out all the information. You can book your tickets from there. Um, it's something that I haven't been able to see just yet. But I remember when they were touring um, last year, doing kind of out, outdoor theatres of the minute, minute and stuff. Um, a few of my friends went to go see it and they were like, it's so good. And I love improv. So it's definitely something that I need to get some tickets for, especially as you can just watch it online. It's perfect. You can watch it wherever you are. Um, Charlotte says, I watched 23 shows. Wish I could have watched them all. 23, that's, that's a lot of shows anyway. Um, Ian says, Mischief are just incredibly talented. Um, Claire says got me through lockdown thank you Alex says oh my god that sounds amazing um, Amy says the goes wrong show helped me write my script for pre-GCSE performance for drama love it for years and has a huge influence on how I write and interpret comedy love you guys so much love for all the mischief team um, yes they are all amazing so do make sure you check that out um, moving on next up we're going to be speaking to Saffron Kuma who is um, currently in a online film called Viral. I'm just gonna see if Saffron is around. Here we go. Let's send a request. Um, Layla says, I've watched all of them so far, best show ever. Um, Mischief Theatre fan says, Dave, if you're still watching, you're a legend. Hello, Saffron. Hello, can you hear me How okay? You doing? 
Yeah, I can hear you fine. How are you all doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Um, so for people who might recognise Saffron, you might recognise her from Tracy Beaker Returns, EastEnders, and most recently you were in Amelia, um, the Olivier Award winning show. Um, yes. How, first of all, let's kind of start off with your career because you've been in TV, you've been in um, theatre. When did your kind of musical uh, theatre journey begin, I guess? Oh, did you hear that? No, I didn't. But I'm guessing Sorry. it's like, where, where did it all begin? Yes. <laughs> yes. Well done. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, so basically, I uh, acting is something that I've always done um, since I was a little babby. Uh, I was doing it with my sister. You know, my mum would take us to Saturday classes, hour singing, hour dancing, hour acting. Um, and uh, through those classes, I went to a place in South East London called Theatre Street. Uh, uh, this casting director was coming round because they were trying to find like real people for this independent film. And I was far, far, far too young to go to the audition, but I just, I had never been to one before. So I, I wanted to see what it was like. So I asked my teacher and she said, yeah. And obviously I just wanted to go for the experience, but um, the casting director was very kind and um, said that she was very impressed with my focus and commitment. And, and I seemed very mature for like 12. <laughs> So uh, she ended up recommending me to my first agent, and um, I yeah I got my first acting job when I was when I was twelve. Uh, it was in uh, another Jacqueline Wilson uh, project called Dustbin Baby. It was a TV film, uh, and then you know I was very lucky to work throughout my adolescence. Um, the longest being Tracy Beaker returns. I was in it for three years, uh, and then. Yeah, I did, uh, did EastEnders, did a bit of Holby City, did uh, a very short scene in Youngers for E4. Uh, I did uh, this series called Cuffs that came out on BBC One. Uh, and in amongst this time, you know, I thought, OK, I've been working for a little while now. I'm coming to the end of my school because, of, of course, in amongst this, I'm trying to get my GCSEs and trying to get my A-levels. Uh, same school kids that's what I'll say uh, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah I just thought okay well now I'm actually going to have the time I finished school of course Spielberg's just going to come and knock in isn't he he's just going to come and ring me up um, didn't happen uh, and so I thought okay okay what do I you know what do I really want it kind of felt like a crossroads moment because I did have a, a place at university to go and study American studies because the kind of school that I was at they were like have a backup have a backup you know and, you know, it was a deferred entry play. So I was getting closer and closer to the time. And I was, I just realized it didn't feel like the right thing for me. Um, and I thought, well, you know, why I, it works for some and absolutely. But for me, I just thought why I didn't want to spend three years of my life, four years of my life studying something that wasn't what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So that's when I decided, OK, I, I don't want to be in this position again where I'm kind of like waiting by the phone even though, you know, it's inevitable as an actor, but that's fine. But, you know, I just wanted to feel like I had more agency or at least more understanding of what I did. Um, and so I decided, okay, I, I want to try out for drama school. Um, so there was another year of auditioning and I got in. Uh, I got into the one that I, re you know, I felt the most comfortable at, the most welcome at. Uh, there for three years, graduated in 2018. Um, and went into, well, I did a little fringe show called uh, A New and Better You, which was at uh, the Yard Theatre. And um, then I did five months at the BBC Radio Drama Company because, you know, I was so honoured and flattered that, like, my teacher thought, you know, people would want to hear my voice. And, uh, you know, it was, it was through um, this uh, bursary award called uh, Carlton Hobbs uh, where like different drama schools kind of audition and then they pick who they want and then yeah your your prize is that you get to work for five months um, and then yes got <laughs> when I finished that got Amelia which you know was <laughs> just like the time of my life time of my life you know um, a real kind of dream come true for me from the first day of rehearsals to that last show I was just I don't think I stopped beaming I just it was it was amazing um and then yeah after that uh, i was able to get back into some screen work which was wonderful um i did uh bbc one's uh lethal white or strike lethal white and then i did uh the deceived for channel five 
Uh, like another dream come true was doing um, Steve McQueen's Small Axe. I was in the Lovers Rock episode, and you know, to be able to tell the story of like my mom and her sisters and you know my family was just amazing. Um, and I was also I also got to work with Anna Paquin, who was too wonderful on the second season of Flat. So it was, 2019 was very, very busy, you know, it was amazing. It was, it was wonderful. I felt so, so blessed. Um, and then, yes, I was supposed to have a theatre uh, job last year, but of course the pandemic. Uh, oh, thank you, Rashid. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, the pandemic happened. So the job that I was supposed to do was moved to this year. Now it's been moved to next year. Um, and uh, yeah, so it was it was a, it was a Last year for everyone, of course, was a difficult time. But, this, you know, I'm talking about the industry that we're in, which is, yeah, it got hit hard and there felt like there was very little support. So if not for some voice work and some excellent short films, you know, uh, I would have been shot. I would, I would say I would have been shot. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah. I, I absolutely, first of all, I absolutely love that you mentioned Dustin Baby because that was my favourite book when I was younger and then when it came on like I think it was like a tv film maybe I yes, remember it watching was, yeah. it and being like oh my god this is amazing um and I also like the thought of Steven Spielberg watching Tracy Beaker and being like of course, yeah going, get her get <laughs> her on the phone <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah you've had such a it sounds like such a uh kind of done lots of different things within your career um and also love the fact that you know you thought oh, I need to have a backup thing I'm going to go to uni but kind of knew what you really wanted to do and went for it and then yeah. got Amelia I mean got to work with amazing women women on this show um yeah. I obviously cried when I watched it oh, um, man. it was amazing <laughs> and yes and then now obviously you are in viral which is um an online film and yeah. so that's with the original theatre company who normally are a theatre touring company um but obviously over lockdown they were unable to do this and then went to kind of online and digital can you tell me a little bit more about that and about the film well I think at, over the lockdown original theatre company has really been quite a pioneer um one of the comments that we got about viral itself was that it goes to show that there's no kind of creative bounds you know they're they're very um brave and very daring as uh, as a theatre company um and they, as far as I, you know, this is not the first short film that they've done over lockdown. They did another one called Apollo 13 and uh, amongst others. And it was just a way to continue, I guess, staying creative, staying engaged in the industry that we all love and, and is our livelihoods, you know what I mean? So I think after the short films that they produced during the first lockdown or at least last year, that kind of, I don't gave them uh, gave them confidence, gave them steam, and they were like, "Oh yeah, okay, this is, let's get a bit bolder, let's get a bit, um, I don't know, let's take some risks." And it, uh, I, what I would say about viral is that it was certainly a new working um, experience for me because there weren't like usually when you're on set, you have like boom guy, you have like uh, like obviously cameramen or camera women or camera people, um, and you know you, there's lots of people and everything like that, but. I, it was all filmed on iPhones, uh, on a little tripod that you could hold, filmed on iPhones, and I was responsible for that. You know, I had a little mic pack attached to me somewhere, which I could, you know, I'm not a mic, I don't know, I'm not a sound person, I don't know how it goes. Um, but, you know, yeah, I was having to, like, film myself as well as trying to do my job, which was a, a wonderful challenge within itself. And it filmed in South East London, which are my ends, which is so lovely, you know. Um, and it was, yeah, it, obviously we... The, the the genre is horror so it was quite an ambitious thing to try and um capture particularly like you know in this kind of guerrilla style of filming um but you know as far as as far as i see like we had our little premiere i think was it last week Monday? like the time is like becoming such a blodge at the moment i don't know but um yes uh, we had our premiere last week and we just had such a lovely time and you know the feedback's been so positive and actually i must say when i was watching it myself i was getting scared and i was like suffering you know that's you yeah like you know that's actually you <laughs> on the screen <laughs> so i do <laughs> always wonder people that are in horror movies if they ever watch it and if they're scared when they watch it back i mean i'm the worst for horror movies i can't Same. deal with this I like, them. terrified no. 
but do you like yeah you know watching it back I guess when you're there you probably feel a bit disconnected from the horror but when you actually watch it back with all the kind of editing and you know it. so into yeah, the story you, yes um like obviously the the whole production team behind it uh, we had a wonderful sound man who did you know he predominantly worked in theatre before so this was a new experience for him as well um and you know what Tristan, who is our, uh, who was our director, said is that they wanted to completely avoid adding music. A lot of the time, you know, in horror films, it's the strings and the very <laughs> that like gets so scary. But you know, they were trying to make this as realistic as possible. So, what our sound man had to, or sound engineer had to find, is that um, you know the the tension that comes with like door slams or footsteps, or you know, the very real kind of musicality of everyday life. Um, and so, certainly, like with Tristan's editing and direction and everything like that and our wonderful sound engineer like you know it all came into one so that when I was able to watch it just as a, as a piece I, I forgot it was it was me like you know it just enabled me to get into the story which I think is such a testament to, to what we've achieved so yeah absolutely <laughs> and the film is free to watch online but um you can donate um yes. so tell me a little bit about what the donation goes towards um, the donation, I'm, look, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to try in front. I, not, I'm not sure. The donation, I, I imagine, goes towards um, original theatre in terms of it allows them to then continue to make um, projects like this. Uh, you know, it get, the whole point of it being free is that they want as many people as possible to have access to the work. Um, and obviously, you know, as they've shown, they want to continue making the work and everything like that. So the donation is to, to continue that legacy, I suppose. Yeah. And please, also... please don't kill me if I'm wrong. I'm so sorry if I am. <laughs> don't quote me. No, I say I also um, read that it was kind of to do like, giving back to people in the industry as well. Um, so obviously yeah. supporting those who um, have maybe been out of work. So I guess artists donation goes to them, that. but also. Are there artists are the artists fund is it? Uh, let me let me check my um <laughs> my trusty little laptop here. Um, yeah. Um, where are we? I mean, yes. I definitely. It is, it is for a good cause. It is. Um, yes. And I so it's, it's um to support freelancers in the arts, theatre, and filmmaking industry. Yes. Um, so yeah, basically what we we're saying. Um, very generous. Yeah, a really kind of good way to give back to the industry as well by creating work, which is what I think this industry has done so well with over the kind of last few year, months mm -hmm. and last year is creating work and keep putting work out there, even though it's been a little bit tricky at times. Absolutely, um, absolutely. So, yeah, it sounds like it's definitely worth um, going to watch and definitely worth donating to as well um, if you have enjoyed it. Um, cool. So I'm just going to go back to my questions. Here we go. Uh, so who would you recommend this film to? Um, who's kind of your ideal audience? Which is probably a bit of a annoying question because you want everyone to watch it. But what do you think? <laughs> um, I think ideal audience is anyone... <laughs> if you enjoy horror films, you'll enjoy this. You'll enjoy it. Uh, if you don't enjoy horror films, I'd say be brave. You know? Um, I think... What I really like about it, and I've mentioned it before uh, in a, a, another interview, is that it's not just a horror film for me, because I feel like that kind of undersells it, or people have a preconceived notion of what it's going to be like. I think I, what I really enjoy about the film is um, the added element of the family relationship between my character, um, my character Eve, and uh, the woman who plays my mother, Sutara Gale. She's a fantastic actor. It's just amazing. And what I love about the whole relationship dynamic is that it, it stops just being a horror film because it's about two people trying to look after themselves in extraordinary circumstances and uh, look after each other in extraordinary circumstances. And I think that is what like plucks the heartstrings, I think, for me watching it, because that's what we've all globally been trying to do. We've been trying to look after each other, our families, our loved ones as best we can without with this massive danger around us all of the time, you know? Um, so having that element in, I think, if you just enjoy, my ideal audience is people who enjoy a good story, who don't mind a little bit of a, <laughs> you know, feel a little bit tense, a little bit of a thriller, a little bit of suspense, you know, if you're, if you're down for the ride, I'd say give it a go. 
Awesome. Um, cool. Finally, going to leave you with one last question. Um, now that everything is kind of opening back up again, is there anything that you're particularly looking forward to going and seeing or doing um, back in normality? Well, um, luckily for me, I am very, yeah, I'm blessed, man. Like, I, I've got a play coming up um, at the Rose Theatre in Kingston called Lepers. And then after that, I've got a play uh, at the Bush Theatre called Old Bridge. And it's just, they're all, they're new writing. They're fantastic. And it's just a dream. Uh, but most of all, getting back out there. I mean, I absolutely want to see the um, the Bob Marley musical written by Irene Zikane. Jeez. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. yes, that's it. I can't wait. And I really want to see Lava at the Bush as well, because um, Ronke, it, she was the woman who like ferried us on the first round of rada auditions that's the first day i met her and um, um she ended up becoming my industry buddy because she went to rada as well um and so you know and she is just magnificent at what she does so i am desperate to see that <laughs> awesome well thank you so much for joining today um all the best with um the film and being back in those stages again um thank yeah thank you so much Thank you. And thank you, June. I'm glad you enjoyed Viral. <laughs> Have a nice evening, everyone. Bye. Bye. Oh, lovely. Um, yeah, June says Viral is fantastic. Saffron was amazing. So um, what I didn't mention was how to watch it. Um, so you can go on to, I think it's Original Theatre Company's website and um, Viral will be there for you to watch. Obviously, you can see all the other shows, um, films that they've got on there as well. As I said, it's free of charge, so you can go and watch it. But um, if you can donate, that would be fantastic because it will be going towards kind of freelancers and people within the theatre and film industry who, um, you know, haven't been able to work as much over the past year um fantastic so we have come to the end of our live um thank you everybody for joining um i hope i wasn't talking too quickly from my fizzy drink i've definitely calmed down i feel like i just need to have a little zen evening after my crazy day um just wanted to mention that our back on stage competition is still rolling it's still going until the 31st of august so this is um, if you go into theatre and see a show um, then you, and take a picture and upload it, you can be in with a chance of winning £200 in theatre tokens and an overnight stay in a London hotel. So £200, you know, that's a few tickets for you and some friends to go and see a show. And then um, the overnight stay is you and another person. So perfect kind of weekend away in London to go and see a show. Um, theatre tokens are actually also you can spend them in over 250 venues, I think, around the UK. So it's an amazing prize. All you need to do to enter is um, upload a picture of you being back inside the theatre, telling us what you think, tagging us at London Theatre and using hashtag back on stage um, in your post, just so we know that you're entering the competition. Um, because obviously it's all change at the moment and as things are starting to open back up we want to see how you guys are experiencing it and hear from you and you know tell us what you've enjoyed about being back in the theatres um because that's one of the best parts of my job is talking to you lot um so before i get too mushy um, i'm gonna end it there thank you so much to everyone who's been watching um and we'll see you next week and don't forget to check out western live um, you can follow our Instagram at Western Live for the latest information and I'll see you there.